Excellency Mr. Mohammed for his statement. I now give the floor to His Excellency Mr. Mike Emin, Prime Minister of Aruba, on behalf of the Kingdom of the Netherlands. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, I have the honor to speak on behalf of the Kingdom of the Netherlands as Prime Minister of Aruba. We welcome the initiative by the New Zealand to hold this meeting within the Security Council to address the peace and security challenges that SITS are facing. We are also very grateful for the presentation today by the Prime Minister of Samoa, the Prime Minister of Jamaica, and our friend, the Minister of Finance of Seychelles. It is a topic of particular interest to the Kingdom of the Netherlands since three out of the four autonomous countries within the Kingdom, Aruba, Curaçao, and St. Martin, are in fact SITS. I am very pleased and proud that we take a great interest in representing the voice of small island states, both within and outside of the borders of our kingdom. Now let me ask you to take just a moment to imagine life in many of the sits. The first imagination that comes to your mind might be tropical paradise, pictures of a small island with palm trees surrounded by a place of turquoise sea. And yes, this image is entirely correct when it comes to Aruba, Kuros, St. Martin, or any of the other Sitz Islands. At the same time, even the inhabitants of paradise have to deal with their share of serious challenges. Some of these are local, some are regional, and some are global challenges. And when we were in Samoa, small island states, together with large countries and large corporations, had the opportunity to share the challenges and the permanent handicaps that small island states face. And it was very encouraging in Samoa to see how maybe for the first time, large countries, large institutions, and large corporations really, for the first time, in a very concrete way, committed themselves to work towards the future and the improvement of quality of life within the SITS. Let me share with you briefly today three of the challenges and share some insights on what we can do in order to respond these challenges that face so many of our SITS islands. First, the effect of climate change. The sheer horror of having to survive an extreme tropical storm is a familiar phenomenon in my region, the Caribbean. You know the storm is coming, and in some islands you know that there is no high ground for escape. In the meanwhile, the ever higher seas or cyclones are destroying the little plots of land, the house of your family, and the local school. Just last March, the Pacific witnessed a devastating example of such an extreme weather event when Cyclone Pam swept through the region. Climate change affects us all. And here today, Mr. President, you could have witnessed prime ministers ministers and representatives of countries that do not only face devastation with a possible natural disaster, but already know by a fact that within 20 years, 50 years, or 60 years, they might not exist anymore as an island. This is a dramatic given that we as a Security Council, as the United Nations, as the world, have to deal with. And today, as we look how the climate change is affecting us already, and we know that the extreme risks are developing in a way that are very threatening to fragile states with fewer resources and the least capacities to cope with, we will have to leave this hall 
with a more stronger commitment than we left Samoa to work with these islands. As the Kingdom of the Netherlands, we recognize the need to strengthen resilience to climate fragility risk. This is one of the reasons why we are working hard for the adoption of a new ambitious, legally binding and global agreement in Paris later this year. The Kingdom of the Netherlands is organizing the first international conference on planetary security, peace and cooperation in times of global change and environmental ch challenges. And the 2nd and the 3rd of November of this year, this event will be held in The Hague at the Peace Palace. The conference will be an annual event in order to maintain an ongoing focus on the important topic. Some may believe, Mr. President, that only large nations can effectively fight climate change. But each country, no matter how small, can contribute to the fight against climate change. In Aruba, we are a small country, but we are seeking to transition of fuel oil by 2020 and to share the lesson we learn with other countries, especially SIDS. We believe, as do many others in the fight, that small island nations can be laboratories to demonstrate how this transition can occur in all countries. And in Aruba, we view the move to renewable energy as part of a broader vision of shared and sustainable prosperity in which we not only take strong steps to preserve our physical environment for the future and our future generations, but also to ensure our social, economic, and cultural environment prosper actively as well. Mr. President, let us not forget that inequality also breeds insecurity. Second, many cities face the challenge of transnational crime. Many cities lack the capacity to patrol the immense waters surrounding our islands. This has a negative impact on our ability to fight transnational crime. The threat posed by criminal networks dealing in drugs and arms can have truly destabilizing effects on our islands. We combated these threats together on Aruba and the other parts of our kingdom, together with the Dutch Caribbean Coast Guard, which patrols a large part of the Caribbean waters to the northwest of Aruba, Curaçao, and Bonaire. But also regional and international cooperation needs to be further strengthened in order to be more effective. Such collaboration helps increase the possibility to counter transnational crime. Third, a lack of marine patrolling capacity can also sustain the illicit exploitation of natural resources, including illegal, unreported, and unregulated IOU fishing. This can negatively impact the sustainable yields of fish stocks. The damage to unique coral reefs can affect the livelihood of sits. This is why a standalone sustainable development goal on oceans is important because it seeks to regulate harvesting and to end overfishing, IOU fishing, and destructive fishing practices by 2020. This morning, the Secretary General called for partnership with SITS to address current security challenges. That is what the Kingdom of the Netherlands, as your partner for peace, justice, and development, aims to do. Some examples. With seashells, we fight piracy. With Grenada, we have started cooperation on blue growth and food security. And after Hurricane Penn, the kingdom was amongst the first countries to provide assistance to Vanuta and Kivras. Aruba and the kingdom of the Netherlands together with Carbon War Room and the Dutch Institute for Applied, Applied Research, TNO, are reaching out to 10 other Caribbean islands to share with them our experience on the pathway to total energy sustainability. In conclusion, the Kingdom of the Netherlands welcomes the interest of the United Nations Security Council in SITS and in the challenges we face. Stronger regional and international collaboration is needed in order to face the security challenges we encounter 
in the Caribbean and in the other regions where SITs are situated. That is also one of the motivations why the Kingdom of the Netherlands is a UN Security Council candidate for 2017 and 2018 term. We best know our challenges and keep the interests of small and medium-sized countries close at our heart. We welcome and encourage further discussions on international challenges affecting CIS now and in the future, with a view to strengthen the solidarity between larger and smaller members of the UN family. We as Aruba grew in a modest nest of six SITs. And when we think of our smaller brothers and sisters, Bonaire, Seba, and St. Eustatius, we feel compassion, a sense of solidarity and responsibility towards them. So should the larger countries, the world institutions, even large corporations should think of small islands, developing states with the virtue, I am my brother's keeper. Thank you, Mr. President. I thank His Excellency, Mr. Iman.